Are you looking for the perfect resource to teach primary maths? Well, today on Resource Review, we'll be looking at three that might fit the bill. A CD packed with classroom activities. I am 48, halve me. I am 24, divide me by three. A book of problem-solving cards. What number add itself equals the number multiplied by itself. And a storybook used in an unusual way. Intrigued? Well, find out what our panel of experts think here on Resource Review. Our expert today is Judy Sayers, a senior lecturer in mathematics education at the University of Northampton. Joining Judy is Adrienne Jones, a former primary school advisor, now turned educational consultant. With Adrienne, we also have Jenny Piggott, director of Cambridge University's Enrich Children's Mathematics Project. Thank you all very much for coming. So, Judy, let's start with the Numeracy Resources CD. Can you tell us about this resource and why you chose it? It's just a catalogue of resources in here. There are four types of resources. Um, there are the main resources, things like whole number cards, uh, decimals, fractions, etc. But also there are activities. There are lots and lots of open-ended activities to use some of these resources with. Um, and also some um, consolidation resources and about 40 photographs of things, just things that you'd see outside every day that you can bring in the classroom and discuss. Well, thank you very much. Before we talk about the resources, anymore, let's see it in use. During the half-term break, we gave it to maths teacher Isaac Noon, also known as Mr Numbervator from Kenmont Primary School in London. And he put it through its paces with young friends and relatives at Kensal Rise Library. The resource is a CD and it's full of about over 100 maths activities that you can use in the classroom. The format that the actual activities come in are the PDF files that you can download from the CD and you can print them off straight away from any, from any printer and you can use them with the class immediately. I chose four activities. The first one was called Follow Me, which worked really, really well. There's a question at the end of each card. Whoever has got the answer to that question will say, I am whatever the answer is, and then read out your question. I am 48, halve me. I am 24, divide me by three. The next activity that we did was called Sandwich, which I think worked one of the best activities that I chose out of the four, because it's all about using the digits from one to six, and you have to make big and medium and small two-digit numbers. The next activity was, uh, it was like a crossword, but using numbers and digits. Three down, eight more than four across. And the final one that we did was, I thought, a, a very, very good way of challenging their understanding of place value and moving them gently into using decimal numbers. What's, what's 3.0 plus 1.5? 4.5, can you see what's happening? When it comes to the printing of the resources, I think maybe there could have been a lot more colour. The children playing the activities today, they really thoroughly enjoyed the activities because they found them interesting, which is predominantly the most important factor in any classroom. They found them fun and they definitely found them challenging. And for me, to have this idea of rigour in their learning, but through the enjoyment, that is the key to success in the maths classroom. Well, Judy, a very positive response from the mm. teacher there, but it seemed awfully fiddly, lots of printing and cutting out. Is that quite a lot of work for teachers? Once you've cut out um, the zero to nine number cards, they've got them as their own set, so they could keep them in there on their own, uh, in a box on their own table or in a, in a drawer in the classroom. So these things are, are generic, right. but the actual activities you can use again and again. So I think it would just be the initial um, introduction of an activity. Um, and then I think you, you're, you're away. OK. <laughs> Adrienne, what did you think? We saw their consolidation activities, but that's just one quarter of what's on the whole CD. So, in fact, the CD's good value because it gives teachers all the kinds of net shapes and little jigsaw puzzles and numbers that can be printed off. 
None of them are desperately original, but they're all there. Jenny, what were your thoughts on the Numeracy Resources CD? Well, I, I think um, I think it was really a really good resource. I, I do have a word of caution I'd like to share with people that might want to use it because when I first picked it up and looked, I happened to go to the consolidation exercise. My first response was death by worksheet. It took me a short while to realise there were all these resources, but they work again and again and again, and you're not restricted to the activities that are on the CD. OK, so it's not death by worksheet then? Oh, good luck. No. No, no, no. no. <laughs> OK, well, thank you all very much. Now let's move on to Judy's second recommended resource, and it's a book, and it's called We Can Work It Out. So, Judy, again, can you explain what this book is and what makes it stand out? I like this book. <laughs> um, it's another one of these ATM books. They've got some lovely resources, and this one's no exception. Um, there are 25 activities in here. They are photocopyable um, activities covering 10 mathematical themes. You'd photocopy a set of cards on card, which you can use again and again, for groups of children. You'll set a, a problem uh, to solve, and the children have to sort and organise the information, picking out what is useful to solve the problem and what pieces of information are just no use at all. Well, thank you. Now let's have a look at the resource in use. We visited Engain Primary School in the London Borough of Havering, where teacher John Manifold put it through its paces for us. Today I was carrying out a, an algebra task. Well, everybody, let's get started. Let me tell you what we're doing today. I gave the children a series of cards containing mystery symbols, symbols with a number value, which we didn't know. The children had to sequence the cards in such a way that they, it would help them to identify the values of the mystery symbols. I think you've worked out the value of your first mystery symbol. The task today, as it was presented to the teacher, was simply a, a single page of A4 text. I had a TA photocopy it, laminate, and split it into the individual cards Five. because it's very important to the children that they were able to sequence those cards in order to solve the activity logically. What number add itself equals the number multiplied by itself. It's a very well designed resource for lots of reasons. It's very lean. There's very little in the booklet which is unnecessary. There are very few teacher notes which oddly I think is a very good thing because people rarely read the teacher notes and I know that I don't. It's a well designed resource because it doesn't involve a great deal of preparation. Can somebody come up to the board and show me which card they solved first? It's a little bit fuzzy, but I think you can manage it. Go on, go on, Connor. I think in these days it would be extremely useful to have these materials presented either, either as a PDF file or even better perhaps as a Word file or a publisher file, something which could be placed on the board in order for the teacher to model the task a little more efficiently. I think the pupils really enjoyed this kind of activity. I think they enjoy it because it's collaborative, because they have the opportunity to debate and discuss. The next time that um, target in the National Numeracy Strategy appears, solve problems involving, then I will definitely be using this, probably as an introduction to a lesson. Well, Judy, again, a popular resource with mm. our teacher, but there is this obvious limitation that it is just the photocopyable sheets, it's not on a CD-ROM. Is that just something that's going to put teachers off? Well, it could do, but I, I do think it's a cheap resource, a good starting point. And often that's all a teacher needs in the classroom, is a starting point, an idea. And once you have a resource like this, it sort of leads on to other things. You can see other things to do. Ah, you know, I could make a, a set of cards myself for, for the class in right. this particular topic. Yes, I mean, Jenny, isn't this something that any good math teacher could just do themselves? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think lots of us would encourage uh, when we're working with training teachers to make sets of resources up. It come, again, it comes back to the time. And I always say, if something like that is produced by an organisation like the ATM, lots of time and effort and teacher experience has gone into it. And on your own, actually, it's very difficult to duplicate. What it does, though, is sparks you off with lots of ideas. Adrienne, what are your views on We Can Work It Out? I liked the use of speaking and listening skills. And in fact, although the teacher that we saw on there said there wasn't a lot of 
introductory talk that he had to read through. It does explain quite succinctly about how to use it, and I thought that that element of discussion was good. I was concerned, as it's a paper-based thing, that actually they're very small, the pieces of paper, mm -hmm. and very papery, and very <laughs> easy to kind of mess up. So you would need, if you're going to use it as a paper-based thing, to laminate it. Well, thank you very much. Now let's move on to the third resource, and this is something a bit different. It's a storybook, uh, Raymond Briggs, The Man, but for primary math, Judy, <laughs> <laughs> explain yourself. <laughs> Um, it's, a, it's just an example, really, of how you might pull out maths from a story. Um, the man was popular with my Year 4 class many moons ago, and I was reading some reviews once, and the reviewers said, oh, this is a wonderful story about a 6-inch man, and somebody else said a 10-inch man, and I began to think, well, how tall is he? And when you look at the illustrations, some beautiful illustrations, um, you will see that he's actually standing against or next to things that you'd see at home. So things like a marmalade jar, a bag of sugar, an after eight, a digestive chocolate biscuit. Um, and he sleeps in a man-sized tissue box. <laughs> so children have a... I mean, you could have those things in the classroom for them to look at. But it, it's going to develop their idea of estimating using benchmarks. So um, although the story necessarily might not be mathematical, um, I mean, it runs through it's this little man who comes and stays with this little boy out of the blue for five days. And then he moves on. Jenny, what do you think of the use of a storybook in math? Yeah, well, I think this is a fantastic idea. I mean, like Judy sort of intimated, I have some struggles with the book in terms of moral issues and things, and it's very difficult to get to grips with. But it, immediately, once I'd been given the resource to look at and think in that way, it, on the back it says that the man is pi half pint size, and inside it says his head is the size of a ping pong ball. And I'm thinking, well, what size does that mean he is? All this measuring you can do with youngsters that's actually uh, making you think about, is this right? Where are the in inconsistencies in the book? Mm. And um, one, one particular thing was uh, how many after eight mints can man really reasonably be expected to eat? Because there are about 20 <laughs> on the floor. Yes. How do you manage that? Yes. <laughs> He's only this big. Adrian, what do you think of this as all? Uh, I think using literature yeah. in the context of maths is a brilliant idea. I mean, and in the same way that you could use the story of Jack and the Beanstalk, mm. or you could use the Iron Man looking at shape, mm. for example. So anything that encourages teachers to actually really think originally about how to use the content of a book for mathematical purposes. The story, I think, needs a lot of unpicking mm -hmm. if, you're, if you, you know, to look at it from that point. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yes, well, just a final comment from you, Judy. Well, I'd reckon just try it. Just try, just try taking a story that you might be using in literacy for that week. What maths is there in there? Just ask yourself the question, okay. what maths can I bring out? OK, and see what reaction you yes. get from your class. Yes, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> well, thank you all very much. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. But to summarise, the resources that we looked at were Numeracy Resources, CD-ROM from Mathematical Publishing, we Can Work It Out book from the Association of Teachers of Mathematics, and finally, Raymond Briggs' The Man, published by Random House. For more information about any of the resources that we've discussed today, and to post your own comments about other resources for primary maths, go to our website, it's teachers.tv forward slash resource review, or if you want to, email us, resourcereview at teachers.tv. A big thank you to our panel, to Judy, to Adrienne, and to Jenny, Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye-bye.